Well, I figured out a situation with the mower. Uh, about a month ago, I noticed something odd happened in the front end up here in the front right. And um, I actually stopped mowing, dropped the deck, raised the deck, turned it off, looked at it and everything. Couldn't find nothing wrong with it. So I just kept on going and it started working fine again. Slowly started getting vibration in the front right. So over here. And a couple days ago, I cut grass. My daughter wanted to ride, so like any other good dad, I took her for a ride, and it got real bad. So I parked up behind my oak tree, just like I did now, and I went forward and back, forward and back, till my lot, my wheels was straight, and then I noticed this one. Not supposed to do that. See, this one sits still, it just spins. This one, actually have flipped it over already, that's why the tire is on the inside out like that but the bearing has gone completely out of it and it finally just ate itself let me show you what i found that is what was left of the bearing inside of the wheel itself as soon as i saw that it was, it was just destroyed i flipped the, the wheel over and these little pieces came out as you can see it's missing quite a few of the ball bearings and the whole flange and the grease cap and everything is just just just, just destroyed that's just years of use uh, especially me cutting down a ditch on an angle so it's just a matter of time um i'm going to uh, not try supply i'm going to waffle house first we're going to go eat some food but there is a chat supply about a mile down the road and i think they have some that might fit and i think they're about five dollars so i'm going to go see if i can pick one up but first i'm gonna take this wheel off that way i can take it in there with me take it off it's pretty straightforward it is a three quarter inch nut on this end and the bolt head is the same size so if you have two three quarter inch wrenches open in the wrenches that works great uh last time i took it off I actually just used the socket set on one side and then open in the wrench, wrench on the other i'm gonna kill that fucking bird if it keeps on see look how bad that is but um since i left my sockets in the truck i've got just these pliers here and the wrench and i'm just gonna hold the nut like like that and then use my wrench like that. Give me a few seconds, I'll have it off. And there we have it. Like I said, it's pretty straightforward. It's just one, uh, one long bolt holding it through. Uh, there's my good side. Bearing is still there, flange is still intact. There's my bad side. As you can see, it ate the whole bearing. And all my pieces were inside the, the axle there. I actually found another piece of metal. That's good, it came out, that's good. See, long bolt, it's got a washer on each side. And a nut. Simple as that. So I'm going to take this, the track supply. Like I said, I think they have one that fits. I just want to make sure it's the right size. It's got to be the right size to fit in there. And it's also got to have the right size uh, inner diameter hole for the bolt. So I'm going to take the bolt as well. And um, I know this is pressed in, so I'm not really sure I'm going to do that yet. I have an idea. I'm going to wait to see if I can find the actual um, bearing before I tell you the idea. So I'm going to Waffle House. And uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. So I went to Waffle House and like I said, I went to Track Supply. They did not have this exact size. They did have some like the style, but they only had ones that were too big. Uh, so my next stop was a store called Big Blue on the way home and they sell a bunch of odd end parts for tractors and housing and plumbing and everything. They carried it, but they didn't have it. They had five on order. So I said, well, my last final stop will be where I bought the lawnmower from here in my hometown. I said, to be sure he can get it, but they service them too. And he did, 10 bucks. I said, I'll handle that. But the problem now is the casing itself is still in there. So I gotta get the casing out first. You can see the flange on it right there. But all you gotta do is come from this side with a punch, which I have a big screwdriver, and beat it out like that. And then once you get it out, you then free up the room to get the new one in. But if I can't get it in straight just by kind of easing it in and tapping it with a hammer, what I'll do is I'll buy me a threaded rod, kind of like the bolt here, and come through, and I'll stack me a stack of washers with a nut, and then I'll be able to turn the nut down and press it in like that. So let, give me a minute. Let me see if I can beat this out. Like I said, I'm going to come from the side with the good bearing, go through the hole, and you can hear it catching onto the flange and beat it out. So give me a second while I get that one out. So naturally when you punch these out, since it sticks out past the wheel, you need to put it in like a crack in the concrete or a chair or something, some kind of vice. 
that way it comes out and as you can see it's just easily coming out it took probably two you know decent wax with it on the first side or i guess on this side down here and i felt it move so i just switched to the other side did the same thing so let me finish it getting it out and there we have it there's the old flange where the bearing used to be like i said it came out really easy and i just need to clean the hole out now the shaft axle whatever you want to call it and then get the, the new one pushed in this is actually going in pretty easy i could take the hammer and kind of slowly tap all around but what i did is i just reversed my screwdriver and put the handle in and the actual axle hole and started tapping down on the top um, and it's going in pretty smooth so i just wanted to kind of show you one way of doing it i mean there's multiple ways to do it a press essentially just presses it straight in i mean you could flip over a bottle jack and put a piece of wood uh, on top of that like that and use the jack to push the wood down and do it but i was going to take a threaded rod like i said and go through it and use a stack of washers and that's essentially the same thing but this one seems to be pressing in pretty easy like that so that's just one of the many methods you could do it let me uh let me get it finished and there we go for 10 bucks we have replaced our wheel bearing not bad super easy job like I said, the hardest part was actually getting a hold of it, but I went to the place where I bought it and actually had some since they service them. Ten bucks. I can tell you, I went to uh, when I went to Track Supply, this whole wheel assembly here with a generic one was eighty-five dollars, and I believe you can get generic ones on Amazon and mess like that for around fifty or fifty-five. But I didn't want to do that. The rest of the wheel was good. Some people would do it because it's easier and faster, but it's just a bad bearing. I mean, it happens. It's a maintenance item. I should have went ahead and bought two of them and done that one because that one seems like it's getting kind of worn out a little bit. But it's still good. Brand new one. Now all we got to do is just put it back on the lawnmower. And there we go. Like I said, it's just a rod with a washer on one end and a washer on the other with a nut. And it spins. And guess what? No more wobbly. It's amazing. One thing I can tell you though, since this fork is open and doesn't have a, like a coupler on the bottom, obviously because it's got a wheel on it. Um, you do not want to over tighten that too much because then it starts compressing the fork and it would actually make this wheel not spin and you know you got to back it off and figure it out but as long as you get it close to like the other one is it's pretty good so i'm gonna lower my awesome jack stand here go take it for a test spin but it's nice it's nice and smooth like i said no more wobbling all right enjoy have a good rest of your day